Joygasm, the video game and movie podcast. I'm Russ, he is Steve, and we hope that you had a very fun-filled St. Patrick's Day on this March 18th, 2022. We're going to be kind of catching up with each other before going right into our topic of the day, which is the Tunic Game Impressions, which you can fast forward to if you look at the timestamps located in the detailed section below. And before we go any further, make sure you click on that subscribe button as well as perhaps squeeze that notification bell. That way you will not miss a single episode of Joygasm, which drops once a week. Every week. Steve, it is good to see you once more. How was your St. Patrick's Day? Um, I don't think we had one, Russ. I mean, I think... We had one yesterday, Steve. I think we wore our appropriate green underwear. Ah. The day came and went. Mm-hmm. And then we showered. Nice. But other than that, Russ, no uh, four-leaf clovers, no... Uh, Did no you have any uh, dyed beer, dyed green beer, Steve? No. Dyed beer, Russ. No, even no, no Irish beer. Mm. No Irish whiskey. No corned beef and cabbage, Steve. No corned beef and cabbage. Mm. No green top hats. No, 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 even Irish accents throughout the day. Irish jigs, perhaps. Uh, nah, not that. Doesn't sound very... Sorry, Russ. Uh, well, don't, don't apologize to me. I just uh, figured you would do just, something. Uh, I got nothing against the Irish. I just um, like the work, I guess. I don't know. I just enjoy working. Making money. That's okay, Steve. That is quite all right. And I'm not here to judge either because I didn't do really you much of anything do either. Jack. Didn't really do much of anything. I was actually working as well. And, All uh, most you did was <clears throat> eat a bowl of Lucky Charms. You know, we we do actually have Lucky <laughs> Charms in the house. <laughs> oh, I did not. Oh, man. My daughter had some. Uh, oh. I, however, did not. I sh- totally should have. I'll have to think about uh, doing that next year. I've never liked mushrooms. Not, not mushrooms. <laughs> I never liked mushrooms in my cereal. I've never liked you? crack cocaine and mushrooms in my cereal. <laughs> kind of throws off the <laughs> taste of the milk. Uh, but mushrooms in like an omelet? Sure, Russ. Yes. Marshmallows, on the other hand, the only thing those are really good of. Marshmallows. You put them in a s'more. That's about the only thing they're good of, Russ. I can't eat them straight. Uh, Not even in cereal either. S'mores are good. I like s'mores. Smorgasbords of Indeed. s'mores. In. Deedy Rudy. Steve, what have you been playing and watching lately, huh? Ah, oh, Russ. Uh, let me see. Let me think back here. Yeah, uh, Steve. Noodle. Uh, I think we've been actually watching more stuff than playing. We're kind of running out of stuff to watch. We're kind of exploring Amazon Prime. Mm. Prime. <laughs> um, let's see. We watch. Uh, we watched two Jack shows, Russ. Two Jack shows. We watched Reacher. Ah, yes. I have not seen that show, but I hear it's actually pretty good. Not bad. I'm not sure bad. you probably we, saw that after being a fan of A Quiet Place, didn't you, Steve? Um, Actually, the one you're thinking of is Jack Ryan, which, oh. yes, we watched that one too, <clears throat> and we really enjoyed that one. So the TV show of Jack Reacher, mm. who is the, the main actor? Who, who's the main character? Yeah, you're going to ask me that question, Russ? What? You're going to ask me that question, Russ? I'm not great with names. He's a big, burly dude. Probably played college ball. He's got a great head of hair. Well, there has he been any other movies or TV shows? Actually, he was, uh, I think he's actually the voice of Raphael in the latest Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I think. I have no idea who that is. Oh, you see? There you go. That, but that's who's the lead in the show? Yeah. He's a pretty buff dude. It's huge. It's Interesting. Massive. Big sausage of a fella. So you were watching the, the Jack Reacher, not Jack Ryan. We watched both shows. Oh, yes. okay. Which one do you, do you prefer? Jack Ryan. Jack Ryan. It's awesome. Mm. It's a great that's, show. Yeah, that's for us. And yes, uh, so the same dude is in there yeah. from uh, Quiet Place. And uh, I, I thought they had the show out for a while. I guess they've only had it out a couple years. Season three is coming. 
but there's only two seasons so far. Now, are you aware of the Tom Cruise, Jack Reacher movies that came out before the TV show? I'm aware. Okay. I have not seen them. They're not bad. They're okay. I would say I definitely prefer the Mission Impossible mm. movies over the Jack Reacher efforts, but mm. I just didn't know if you had uh, seen those or not. It's kind of funny because I was flipping through <clears throat> Amazon. It's like, oh, here's Jack Reacher. Here's Jack Reacher again. Here's other Jack Reacher. I'm like, man, we're reaching for a lot of Jacks here. Indeed. I gotta say, if I'm going to put my finger on it. The name Jack is actually used Quite a bit Jack in Hollywood. Jack. Don't like, come like, back. That's just one of those those names in the script that apparently is uh, kind of a go to. But there's quite a few if you think about it. It's a pretty plain apple pie American name. I wonder why that is. Jack. I don't know. Anything else, Steve? Well, we uh, wife and I are making our way through Resident Evil again. Again? Was well, the second time? Second Z's. Second Z's. Eleven Z's. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we started playing it, and then we started just watching shows. Wait, wait, wait. Which one is this? Uh, seven or eight? Eight. Oh, yes. going back through the eight. No. Yeah. So we're. Numero ocho. I am. I've just defeated Heisenberg. Mm-hmm. And um, Bad. about bashed it. Ten hours into it, Rose, and uh, about to face off with the uh, the witch. Wait, you're kind of far then. If you've already faced off against Heisenberg, yeah. Wait, 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 are you, at the end of it, are you kidding me? Are you doing a little speed run there, Steve? I am. Mm-hmm. All I really wanted to do this time, see, I wanted to beat it on hard. I was just about to ask you, are you playing it on hard? I am not. Wussy. <laughs> reason being, I have good reason, Russ. <laughs> I wanted to get like, a reason or excuse. <laughs> I wanted yeah, no <laughs> drama here. I don't want any drama. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to upgrade my weapons a bit more before I went oh. too hard. I, fear for, I figured if I was going to die a lot more, I might as well just die just, just firing off everything I could fire. And Does that game have a new game plus mode? <sighs> yes, Russ. Is that what you're doing? Yes, Russ. I need to do that. Yes, you do. I really I, do. I, I'm not sure if there is a separate ending if you beat it on hard. I mean, it, it encourages you to do so. And I, so I figure they might give you some sort of extra, hey, thanks for playing our game again, reward at the end if they beat it on hard. But I don't know. Well, you, you've you been a hardcore fan of Resident Evil as it is. So, I mean, <sighs> I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to go through. I mean, that game is really, really good. So. Well, also um, playing it on the uh, Series X also. And it's totally different when you're 4K playing TV? it on the Series X than on the base system. Ah. Oh. Gosh, I mean, the walls aren't even blurry. I can actually see <laughs> texture and the brick and in the rocks and on the muddy walls. And I mean, there's there's light kind of glistening on certain particles of the snow. It really does make a difference. The water. Look. It's a whole different game. Everything looks just gorgeous. Gorgeously Beautiful. horrific. Oh, Yes. Yeah, that's a great game. I do Man. need to go back through and play on New Game Plus. Do they? Mm. So I assume they, they allow you to keep all of your weapons from the first go around? Yes. So uh, basically when you, yeah. So you don't have everything in the very, very beginning. Yeah. So you get the handgun and then that's what you have for a little while until you go back into your inventory. You're like, oh, I'm going to equip a bunch of other stuff. And I kind of forgot how many lichens there are in the beginning. So I'm like, there's pow, 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 just shooting like crazy. And they just keep on coming. Like, you have to get to a certain place yeah. where I'm like. They probably spawn indefinitely God, until you reach a certain like, point. Ran out of ammo. Um, so they so they allow you to keep your weapons and yes. the, I guess, the ammo you had left over from when you yes. defeated the final boss. Everything. Ah. Yeah, even the money that you had before. That's cool. Transfers over to this one, too. Because, I mean, everything's expensive when you're upgrading it. Well, and that was going to be another question I had too, is when you are actually going through and buying stuff from the merchant, are his prices the same from the first time you play the game or do they ratchet everything up crazy high? Seems like they're the same. Okay. I forgot what they were before, but it seems like they're <clears throat> the same. Okay. Um, so there's some like rated parts that I, that I got. And, and uh, I imagine it must be fun to be able to actually play through the game a second time with all the weapons already unlocked. Am yeah. I right? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you're, you're 
pretty awesome. You know, after you, you know, instead of having like a little pea shooter, you have like the main handgun yeah. or like the sniper rifle upgraded all the way or the shoddy upgraded all the way. And so you're just like, yeah, you want to tumble a bit? Let's go. You start feeling like you're Neo from the Matrix walking through the metal detector. <laughs> Only you're in Love Resident Evil. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool. That awesome. We had a, speaking of which, <laughs> we had a friend over. And this uh, is one of your imaginary friends, Steve. Yes. Oh, is it Bob? <laughs> Bob. <laughs> Could it be? <laughs> anyway, so uh, they were over. We had them over for a little bit of dinner. And we said, I told him, I said, hey, let's go upstairs and do a sound check. Because uh-huh. he's a nice sound. He's got a little system in his car and whatnot. Is he a gamer as well, Steve? He is. He likes to play a lot of UFC stuff. UFC. Fighting games. Like uh, the UFC uh-huh. on EA 2K, I think it was. Something like that. Yes. So, I hadn't done this in a while. And I brought him up. (laughs) Put it in the Matrix. And I tied him up. (laughs) (laughs) And left him there. (laughs) He's still there today. Dangled him by his thumbs. (laughs) (laughs) He's still there. That's awesome. And he's still there to this day. So uh, why we do something? Uh, uh, you know. um, uh, I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm kind of losing circulation right here. Yeah. Um, oh boy. Anyhow, so I threw in the Matrix. That mm. scene you're talking about. Uh huh. Cranked it up. You uh, did you blow out your speakers? No. Oh, good lad. But the uh, the ladies downstairs were like, "What is going on?" Oh, I'm sure. Yelling. I'm like, come on up and join us. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, but it was loud. It was great. It's awesome. Good. It's good stuff for us. Was he impressed, Steve? Yes. Oh, good. Anyway. Excellent. I shall pause. Give it to you, Russ. Oh, so are you not done with all that is new with you? No, nah, it's about, that's about all I can remember at this point. Okay. I'll need a nap before I can remember more. Naps are good. Indeed. I love me a good solid three hour power nap. Jeez. Uh, you wake up and you're like, ah, time. I'm going to be up till four an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Got my second wind. I'm good to go. Golly. Yeah. Uh, so, on my side of things, actually, I watched a couple of things. Um, I ended up watching um, Hill Bill Volume 2. Ah. And you watched that before, though. Of course. Oh, yeah. I ah, saw it yeah. in the theater. On, Absolutely. Have you seen, yeah, I've seen both volume one, yeah, volume two? I've seen okay. It. okay. Kill Bill, both volume one, volume two, but like, I'll just talk to volume two since that's the one I watched. Sure. Why don't you go ahead and do that? Volume two, like, it's, it's so interesting to like go back to a movie that came out several years ago. I mean, I, I want to yeah. say that didn't that come out like the early 2000s? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I don't remember. I don't remember the exact year, but like, you, it's one of those films where like you forget like how well done it is. And then you go back and you watch it and you're just like completely floored by the storytelling, the, the, the script writing, the acting, just even the, the style that they put into the kill bill. And yeah, I mean, I, I remember back in the day, I mean, it was very popular. Everybody, everybody thought it was a hit. <clears throat> and so when it came to uh, watching again, like the cinematography, like the way they did the shots too, it's, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where like, I think sometimes like I kind of forget, like, you know, that there's, there's instances where you think of like, oh, there's a movie that's been out for a long time. It's one of those older movies, but then, and so as a result, like your brain kind of starts to think of it as like being not as good as like the latest, greatest movies that are coming out. And then you watch it and you're totally reminded of like why this movie was awesome in the first place. So anyway, Really, really fun. I also watched Collateral. Have you seen that? With Tom Cruise and Jamie Foxx? Uh, I'm going to say no. That is one that I would also recommend to you and your woman to check out. Mm. Jamie Foxx plays a taxi cab driver. Yes. And Tom Cruise plays his uh, his client mm. that comes and needs a, a, a taxi driver. And I will leave it at that. But uh, <clears throat> it's like basically this 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 night that will forever be remembered between these two men. So it's, uh, they walked away as bros. Um, 
I'm not going to say what happens, um, huh. but it is a Michael Mann film. Michael Mann uh, is very, very talented. Michael the Man. Man. <clears throat> Exactly, Steve. Exactly. I was also playing Shadow Warrior 3, <laughs> which I personally have been looking forward to for a while now, ever since I saw the trailer come out mm -hmm. for it. And if you recall, Shadow Warrior 3 is that one first person shooter type game, but it's like the main protagonist, the main hero is like an Asian dude. Right. And like he has kind of like his friend slash mentor type who like right. vanishes into that like Asian mask. And he's right. trying to rescue he's him and everything. The sword and yeah. the guns and this, yeah. Has lots of quips and like funny one liners and that sort of thing. I gotta say, it's not as good as I was hoping for, Steve. That's what I heard. That's yeah. why, I mean, I, I remember watching it going, well, you know, it's gonna get some attention. And then it came out and then nobody was talking about it. So I haven't played it. Obviously, to the very end, ah. I'm, I'm still very much in toward the the beginning parts of it. Mm. But I am at the the different parts that we saw in the trailer, where like you see a lot of like the ancient feudal Japan uh, type of environments, and like even all those baddies that you saw him uh, fight up against that sort of thing. One of the issues that I, I noticed right away was that they did the whole like reduction in detail of graphics. Yeah, that's happening too much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think because well, I, I'm not, I'm telling you, I've noticed it on many games. And I think it's because not a lot of people have the next generation systems. And so they have to kind of dial it down to make them work on the lower systems. But because they do that, they're, they're losing some fidelity on the higher grade stuff. <sighs> what are you going to do? I mean, um, you know, chumps like me who got the system a bit late. I mean, I got chances to play the games that were available for next gen, but the sacrifice is that they're not going to look as good as they promised unless they do an update or something and hopefully do time. Yeah. And I also think too, like, like a game such as that, I believe is available on PC. I'll have to double check that. Probably. If it is, then I'm pretty confident that probably the graphics fidelity has remained the same from what we saw in the trailer because they're clearly running it on some sort of machine that, that can really max out everything, right? That's not to say, though, that the game looks bad per se. It's just comparing it to the trailer versus where you see it. it's like, yeah, it's it definitely is noticeable with like them you know, bringing, ratcheting down the, the level of graphics uh, fidelity in there. Now, the gameplay is pretty solid. It's, it's, it's a pretty tight gameplay. I yeah. really like all the different weapons that are there. You know, you, of course, you got your katana, and then, like, you got your different types of uh, weapons that, that you come across pretty early on in the game. I mean, I think I have already at least four different weapons. And that part is fun. One of the other situations with that game, though, is the quips that the hero gives sometimes fall flat. Like they're they're not nearly as memorable or funny as what we heard in um, in the trailer. Because like in the trailer, like you, you like pretty much everything I heard the guy say. Like I mean, I was chuckling, I was laughing. I'm like, this is pretty funny. But then like you start playing the game and there's like the kind of like this long story cinematic at the beginning of the game. And like there are things that, that you can tell they're they are trying to make funny or whatever. And, and for me, I, did, I didn't find that to be as funny. So that that is something else that's kind of like, oh, I, I wish that uh, that wasn't necessarily the case. I'm still going to play the game, though. Still going to um, enjoy it. It's just I think what once was my expectation is, is was here. It's kind of like right here. So. Yeah. For what it's worth, Steve. <clears throat> I don't know if you were planning on checking that game out or not. Probably not, Ross. Probably not. Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. Finally, the last game I was playing was, uh, of course, Halo Infinite, uh -huh. which we have both been playing. Uh -huh. And, of course, we've been playing Overwatch. Sure. We've been kind of getting back into that again. That was a good time. You know, the Halo Infinite multiplayer is having some some issues i would say i think that they're starting to lose uh, some of their fan base yeah and it's it's also perfect it's perplexing is what i was trying to say that they really haven't released any new content yeah after cuz i mean the game came out in november of last year is that right or december is right around november or december yeah probably no yeah probably november ish well, anyway, <clears throat> you know, it's like Miss Gump. 
Now, the typical multiplayer game is right here. <laughs> your game, well, just right down here. <laughs> now, we're going to have to send them to a special school. Maybe get some DLC, some updates, please the crowd. I'm sure there's some, something that can be done. No, ma'am. <laughs> no, there ain't. You got to fix it. Uh, was there a Mr. Goom? <laughs> Mrs. Goom? <laughs> Yeah, ah. I I really do think. What do you think, Gross? Well, I, I just I, I I first of all I'm I, I think it's it's really surprising that yeah. there hasn't been a steady stream of, of content that dropped. I heard also that the lead multiplayer designer quit, That's so he's gone. Always a bad sign. Um, I don't know about um, anybody else, but I just I don't know. I, I want to know what what the what the problem is or what the delay is because. <clears throat> I don't know. I just expected there to be kind of like this constant amount of, of stuff coming out. I will say though, I mean, I still like, like enjoy playing multiplayer, especially like with you, you know, I like, like when, oh, when I'm playing with you and uh, some of our other buddies and we get on and sure. playing the game, it, it is fun to play. There are things about it that are redeemable and that sort of thing. But overall there's a, uh, just certain things I think are, are lacking. Would you agree Steve? Yes, Russ, I would. I haven't really found the multiplayer to be all that exciting. I play basically because you play yeah. and some other people play. And we have a grand old time, but it's about where it ends. What did the fox say? It's time for the topic of the day. topic of the day is the Tunic Game Impressions. This is a title that has been in development for some time now. We have been keeping tabs on it as it was dropped here and there during various E3 press conferences and other types of Xbox-oriented conferences. And finally, it has dropped the, just this past week. It is available on Xbox Game Pass. And we are here to give our initial impressions. Steve, how much time do you think you have put into the game uh, up to this point? Uh, I would say about three hours. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty close to that. I would say I am... I have put probably about four hours. Four? Mm-hmm. Because I... I played a little bit like the first night that I got him that it dropped, and then I put another like three hours in the following day. So I'm curious to know where I assume uh, we're, we're, we're more or less we're like yeah, probably the, around the same. I'll tell you. <laughs> um, so there's a couple different ways you can go. You can go one way, and then the enemies like there's a new enemy that's like a spidery kind of thing. Uh huh. And then you can go the other way, and there's like the Rat King. Well, it's I don't know if it's a Rat King. It, to me, it reminds me of the Rat King from the Nutcracker. Are you talking about the one with like the skeleton hands? No, I don't think it's, he's kind of has green clothes on. He's got like a big kind of C that I, he swings. Yeah, I know what you're or talking something. about. And it's so like a spear or whatever. that's the way I went. At first I was like, I ain't going the spider way. I ain't going to like spiders, <laughs> number one. Number two, they're kicking my foxy butt. I don't like spiders. Gives me the willies. Yeah, especially when I have to go to bed. I don't want to think about them. Mm, indeed. I don't want to dream about them. Get them out of here. <laughs> So uh, that's the way I went. I got my sword. I collected a bunch of uh, random nuggets of stuff. Did you get the shield, Steve? No. I wish I did. I, I knew did. there was a shield. I figured there'd be a bow and arrow at some point. Probably. There's probably a bow and arrow Well, because you, you can kind of look over the edge and see like other enemies, and it still lets you target them. So I'm like, well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> For the time being, it's more like. <laughs> Little snot rocket action, exactly. So that's basically where, where I am at. 
makes perfect sense. You know, the game itself right off the bat reminds me of a Zelda game, one of the classic Zelda games, like Legend of, of Zelda or whatever. Sure. Right. Um, be just because they have the similar isometric view where you're kind of up top looking down. It's that whole action RPG where you're, mm. run, you're running amok yeah. and you, you can pretty much go almost anywhere you want to go. There are certain places that are blocked off because you simply don't have the, the correct ability or the key or what have you. But like I'm instantly reminded of that, which is not a bad thing at all. I think that's right. actually like if you're going <laughs> to take inspiration from a certain game, that's like one of the very best that you could possibly reference from. So that's really, really cool. And I also like going off of what you were talking about, I really like how um, there is that kind of open world sandbox where it, it's not like it forces you to go one specific way. And I think that that's actually um, part of the fun of being able to talk with you about this, where, wow. you know, I've, I've gone a different path. I've, I went into the East forest and that's kind of like where the sword is, I believe. And then I, I kind of like found my way into some other, like, um, I don't even know. Like I, it's like, I don't know if it was a cave or whatnot, but anyway, I ended up finding the shield. And then there's like those other little doohickeys, little items. I'm sure you have come across, which I'm still learning as a result of like playing the game for only four hours. But like, have you, have you gotten any dynamite? Yeah. Okay. So looks like, like, looks like candy canes. It does. It really does. Yeah. And like, I've gotten other things too. Like, like there's like kind of like a pouch, like a white pouch and it has some stuff in the middle and I don't know what that's for. And oh. <clears throat> I got some flower. I got some flowers. Oh, I got you some flowers. Yeah. I got a bunch of random things. Um, I, I'm like, what does all this stuff do? Right. Um, like I got, yeah, flowers and I got some shards of something rather. Besides what was in my pants already, Russ? Uh -huh. um, were they purple as well, Steve? <laughs> yes, they were. <laughs> yeah, I think I got some like fruit or something. Yeah. I got like strawberries. Mm -hmm. I got potion. Yep. I got like what looked like, I'm guessing it was an extra life, but it didn't really make any <clears> sense <throat> it was an extra life because you can kept on re you know restarting. But it was my face. I got <laughs> like, that too. Yeah. I, I have no idea what that does either now that, that, that you mentioned it. Um I will say though that the game also adopts um, mm. some of the like kind of like the, the elements for like a Souls game. So like for me, oh, like yeah? when I remember how I played Sekiro, I forgot all about it. No, you didn't. There are certain aspects to it, like where if you're collecting certain items, that mm. sort of thing, and then you die when you come back, you still have those items with you, or you're able to also replenish some of those items. So like for instance, like your health potion. Initially, I was playing a game and I was concerned about actually using up um, various types of potions just simply because I was like, well, it's probably one and done, right? Like, I mean, you take the potion and then it's just, you know, you're out of potion. That's not the case at all. Essentially, as you go through, you, um, you come across various types of potions that then if you look in the upper right hand corner of your UI, it starts to like stack up. Mm -hmm. And so like, even if like you like say drink one or all of them, if you go back to one of those Fox statues and, and uh, essentially like replenish yourself, it replenishes all those. So that's the kind of thing I like. Again, that, that also plays into some of like what we've come to expect from like a Zelda title. Um, and I, and I think that that's really cool overall with, what I've been playing and experiencing with the game so far is this notion that like, there's really like no specific way to traverse the world. It's just kind of like, Oh, I find myself going down this path. And like, I don't know about you, but I've been finding all kinds of like little secret passage paths and stuff based off of like the, the angle of like the isometric view. Have you been doing that too? <laughs> yeah. I figured that'd be the case. Cause like you can go behind something and it shows your shadow. And yeah. I was like, yeah, there's gonna be some secrets. So yeah, I mean, I would find my way around like the trees and the logs and maybe some rocks or something and find a chest full of orange nuggets, whatever those things are. Yep. What do those things do? Which ones? The nuggets. <coughs> what do they do, Russ? You get a bunch of them, and then you die, and they all, like, sprinkle around you like rings from Sonic the Hedgehog. And then, um, but, I mean, you keep collecting them, and, like, nothing happens, though. Yeah, I am assuming that there's probably a point where maybe you, you run into a merchant or something. Obviously, there's, there's a reason for collecting them. Mm. 
that's another thing too. That's very similar to like a souls game is like, you know, if you, if you die, you can kind of retrace your steps and go back to where you died and you'll see your little like kind of blue foxy ghost form. And if you collect that, you press a on there and then all of a sudden you regain all the stuff that you dropped when you kick the bucket the last day, kick the bucket or were murdered exactly. by something or so, someone. Indeed. What do you think of the graphics? So the graphics are okay. Um, I don't. I don't think the graphics are the game's strong suit. I mean, and I and I don't say that. I mean, like, oh, it's no, no, you know, whatever. But you know, I've come to know some of these side scroller games, uh, like Ori, for example, or um, oh, what's that one that you played? That was like the story was crazy deep, but it was a uh, a side scroller. It was previous generation. I'm not sure. I know which one you're talking about. It was, uh, you know, you're walking around. You're you you kind of fight this blobby thing towards the end. Um, oh, were you talking about Inside? I think it was maybe Inside. That game was awesome. Oh yeah, that yeah. game was great. Ori was Limbo great. and Inside and Limbo, Ori in the Blind Forest. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So um, that's kind of like the the level that I'm kind of expecting. And so this one, I it's a bit not that way <laughs> it's a bit lesser than and it, it's intentionally um, it has like a low poly style to it yeah which i kind of thought okay well i mean this game like needed to be downloaded on my hard drive of my xbox series x i couldn't even download it on my on my external hard drive so i needed like a 4k r drive for what uh -huh. exactly and i mean the graphics are fine but i would want more <clears throat> like effects or or something more to draw me in um, cause I mean, think of it like, you know, inside and, or, or Ori, there is a lot of lighting effects, stuff happening in the background. There's a lot to draw you in, even though it's just a, a side scroller. And I was hoping that this would kind of be the same. That being said though, I mean, there is some, some nice lighting effects the, the first level is really basic looking. And then you get to like the foresty area yep. and there's like light shining through the, the trees and lighting the ground. And I thought that was really cool. Um, but I definitely wanted more of that. See, you got excited there. That's why you had to bang your microphone. You know what's funny about that is I banged my microphone with my spectacles. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen my mic? <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, there it, there is. it is. I found it. Um, so yeah, I mean, nothing necessarily wrong with the graphics, but um, I, I just still wanted more. I mean, it's charming. The graphics are charming. Let me put it that it's, way. Yeah, it's very charming. Uh, I would say whimsical to a certain extent, although not as whimsical as like Ori and the Will of the Wisps or something like that. I do I do really love how they decided to intentionally go for this particular graphic style simply because I don't need like bleeding edge graphic experiences for every single game I play. And especially when it comes to a game like this, you know, they take their cues once again from like, you know, the, the latest um, Zelda game I played on the switch where it had that isometric uh, perspective once again, and they intentionally go also for kind of more of that cutesy charming type of style. I know in the Zelda game, they had um, an intentional shallow depth of field. So that way it actually really makes things pop a bit more in terms of that type of game. And this one, um, while it doesn't have as much of a shallow depth of field, while I did find um, really, really cool is that the more I explored and the more areas I got to, it, this is kind of to your point, they started to get a little more um, sophisticated with the environment visuals versus like when you first start out, you're like, oh, okay. And I think that's, they meant to do that. Like they want to kind of like introduce you to the, the art direction uh, of the style of graphics. And then as you keep pressing forward, it's like, oh, wow, yeah, they're doing all kinds of neat stuff here. And again, because I've only played for four hours, I've managed to get kind of a, like a peripheral radius of the world so far in terms of where I've been able to make it. And I got to say, like, I, I just, I love how you seamlessly transition from like one um, area of the world to the other. And the colors will start to just kind of shift and change. And then the, the music, music changes, changes as well. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of the music, what do you think of uh, the music so far? So I definitely like the music. Um, uh, Quite a lot. It's kind of like ethereal, kind of spacey, you know, music kind of out there, um, you know, taking LSD, so that sort of thing. Um, <laughs> you have a lot of experience <laughs> yeah. taking LSD there, Steve? A negative Ghost Rider. Mm -hmm. So um, that's actually nice. You know, I loaded the game and then I went downstairs and got something to eat and I just kind of let it play. 
and it was just like nice ambient music. It is, yeah. And it was was very very pleasant and I, something I would expect for that game. Sure. Um, because you're you're just a little adventurer. It's not you know crazy exciting. You're not you know uh, brawling and you know causing lightning to rain down and cause havoc and chaos. Not yet that we know of. I mean, there. I think there is magic in the game. Uh, well, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. But I mean, like, not right now. No, no, no. So, um, at least right now, everything seems to fall into place. And it, it, is, it is pleasant. I like the music. It's it one is. Of, it's definitely one of my higher attribu- or attributes to the game. One of my, like, well, so what am I trying to think of? I'm trying to say... Positives? One of my accolades, accolades, kudos. I think that it's one of the game's better qualities is the music. One of the game's strengths. Well, the game's got other strengths, but it's one of the higher strengths for us. One of its strong suits. <laughs> I see. That, that, that'll work. A little, yes. little strong suit. Strong suit. Yes. I have to admit that I was a bit surprised by the choice of the music because oh, with a game like this, I was expecting a bit more of like the swashbuckling, you know, you know, and this was actually a pretty substantial departure from that. But I like it like how you like it, where like, you know, it's, it's very relaxing. It kind of puts you almost into like a Zen state of sorts. And I don't know. And there are things, by the way, um, pivoting away a little bit about the music and and going more towards some of the enemy types. Um, I've run across a handful, I would say at this point, probably about five or six different enemy types. Yeah. However, have you seen the the game trailer for this game? Like the release trailer? Or not? No. Uh, Maybe. Okay. They have... Um, footage of various types of bosses that you come across and they are big. Are they? Yeah. Like I, I like impressively. So like, I don't know. There's, there's a, a great review that Ryan McCaffrey did from IGN. Ah, IGN. And uh, I think in the video that also shows quite a few different examples of the different bosses that you come across. And I mean, they're not, they're not dinky. Like, like your little Fox hero. I mean, they, they take up like three quarters of the screen. So I think that's gonna be pretty yeah. satisfying once we get there. Well, then I guess it's better. We upgrade from the stick to the sword. Indeed. I must admit, I was pretty relieved to find the stick <sighs> and I, I just went out there. I was like, ah! it was funny how like you couldn't like take out any of the, the little bushes, but you could uh, whack a mole. Some of the, the baddies that were annoying you, the blobs yes. and the, uh, the spiky haired guys that spit at you. Indeed. Mm. Guys, I, by guys, I mean creatures, creatures. <laughs> <laughs> away. Have you used much of the dynamite? Not much. Um, it works really well. Yeah, I tended to throw the dynamite in the direction that I was running. And then it hurts you. Surprisingly so. Yeah, I was going to say, you probably shouldn't be any close into the vicinity of <laughs> that <laughs> little kablooey Blast. area of effect. Yes, yes. Nah. Have you collected any of the uh, Ikea-style directions? Yeah, I... <laughs> You see, here's the, here's the, I mean, those are cool and all, I guess. I mean, it's definitely, here, here's what it's really kind of. It's unique. It is unique. Um, I, I guess the, one of the game's strong suits to me is, is also something that is kind of a drawback uh-huh. in a way because like it has its own language. That's pretty cool. Which, I mean, I'm so, so with that. I, I want to know a little bit of what you're trying to tell me to do. Like, okay, an adventure, fine. Um, but then for the another crowd, they go, I don't really care about that. I'm okay because I'm finding stuff out as I go and I want to find out a lot of stuff. And that's kind of what an adventure is all about. Yeah. Um, I just want a little more direction. Like why, why bring up some sort of notification saying yes or no? And you're going, I can't read what you're trying <laughs> to say. Yes. Uh, no, I don't want it. <laughs> And like, well, we have to do it to continue the game. Okay, so yes, then. Why did you ask me? Yeah. <laughs> and so I think there's a bit too much of that where it it leaves something lacking to the story where, um, you know, like, I I have invested in the game. I want to know what's going on. I'm, yeah. You know, I'm playing this. I'm using my time to, to get in involved. And I want there to be 
something drawing me continuously in. Not necessarily fast, but something going, yeah, let's look a little deeper. Let's look a little deeper. What's over here? What's over there? And right now it seems like it's it's just kind of like on my own will. Like, okay, you want to go over there? Sure, figure it out. You want to go over here? Okay, that's, fine. That's totally what it is. Yeah. But, but either direction, though, it doesn't seem to be um, drawing me nearer. I guess there's not enough, there, there's new things to gather, but not necessarily new discoveries to be made are not enough. I would say maybe what you're talking about is more story oriented because I think that there's, there's plenty to search and discover in terms of like the different parts of the world, as well as like different enemy types and the different items that you're collecting. But I do feel like the storytelling aspect is a little on the abstract side. Which I, I mean, if that is what you're getting at, I do agree in that sense where there really hasn't been any kind of exposition or talking or whatever. It's, it's, I think they're intentionally designing it in a way where they just, they want you to just go out and, and play in their sandbox. True. I mean, stuff to, to discover. I'm, I'm talking about, uh, I mean, you're always going to get items in whatever game you play. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's always going to be a certain level of expectation there for, okay, I found a new weapon. I found a new set of armor. I found a new power up, whatever. Um, but like, for example, um, Ori, you, there's no language in it basically whatsoever. They're just kind of going, but you're, they're using a lot of like nonverbal, like expression to tell you the story and let it unfold. And you, you're there using your imagination. Oh, well, they, they do have moments where they are giving story like information, like, like at the beginning of the game, both games, they have this whole like once upon a time story kind of thing that sets up the whole thing. And then like sporadically throughout the game, there are um, additional like cinematic moments. So like you in this game, no, no, in, in Ori, in Ori, in, yeah, yeah, in Ori in the Blind Forest and, and Ori in the Will of the Wisps, and I think that helps to create purpose as to like why this world exists, why you're playing this particular character. But this game doesn't have that, at, at least uh, to the point that we've played. We really haven't experienced any of that, and I don't think it's necessarily like a huge issue, but it is something that I think we both have picked up on and we're like, okay, what, why, what's going on? Like clearly like there is a Fox theme that's going on with all the statues and like, you know, if you die and you make your way in the afterlife over to like some other like elder Fox or whatever, like, you know, I would right. like to know what all this stuff is about. So I mean, I, who knows? Maybe like, as I get farther into the game, there will be more of that or maybe there won't who knows but i can say one of the greatest strengths of the game is how i just organically move about the world where i'm not given explicit instructions like you must go here sure but i'm finding as i'm just kind of like well i wonder what's behind this corner oh i wonder if i can go over there and, and i can more often than not and so like right now for instance like i'm in some kind of swampy dungeon and I don't even know like really how I just came about that. And I've, and I've come across other places too. Like I've come across like this really dark castle cave thing, but I can't see, like I get into a certain point. I know there are enemies in there, but I know that, that due to the fact that I can't see, I shouldn't be in there at this point in time, which again plays to one of the strengths that they are referencing, which is kind of that Metroid style. Like you can see certain areas or you can see certain loot or you can, you can actually walk into places if you want to, even if your character isn't ready to do so. So like that particular example I gave, clearly I'm going to find like a torch sure. somewhere to be able to light my way. So I leave that part and I come back, but I, I, I love how, that type of, of approach has been implemented into uh, this particular game. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can understand people liking it. I just want more. Um, yeah. Purpose. I mean, I, at some point like last night, I thought, well, I don't really want to utilize my time to go forward anymore because it's just not exciting. There's not enough like cool discoveries to be made. And so then I just kind of just put it down and, you know, just looked at some YouTube or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, but other games are going to keep me going and I'm judging whether, okay, you know, it's midnight. Should I get ready for bed or should I keep playing because I want to see what's next? And, and it, that just wasn't there for me personally. Yeah. No. And, and actually I felt the same way. I think after last night, after playing for about three hours, 
um, I all of a sudden just felt like I had my fill for the night. Not to say that like I I'm, I don't want to play it anymore ever or that I'm not interested in the game, but I think that this type of game is like that where it's that like whole, I'll play it for two to three hours and then I'm good. I'll, I'll stop it. I'll put it down for now and I'll pick it up uh, in a couple of days or something and continue playing it or whatever. It's not one of those games that demands that I put like 10 or 15 hours straight into it every single time. And that's not a bad thing. I mean, honestly, this game is kind of like within that same vein of like, like that one game that, that you ended up beating, what was it? 13 minutes or 10 minutes or what was it called? It was like, it was also one of those top down, oh. you know, you're, you're, you are with your wife and like yeah. all that stuff goes oh. on. You have to like make your way through it. You yeah, beat it, right? I did. Yeah. That, it's called like, yeah, five minutes or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. That game left me feeling dirty. <laughs> I ended up not finishing it because I, yeah. even the, as far as I got, which was not, I don't think it was very far at all. Like I, I was just like, man, this game is uh, making me feel uncomfortable. Like, I don't know. It's- In the beginning, it was cool. Like, okay, like what's going to happen? Yeah. I think mean, I was kind of, I was really interested. And then I, I because the thing have to go cycle after cycle after cycle. I'm like, I'm getting really tired of doing the same thing again. And like, even though they would show you new stuff, it was more like, the stuff you have to do in that game is not fun. <laughs> so, but it compelled you to keep going. Yeah, somehow. But I would say that game also, you probably would only put maybe two to three hours in at a time. It right. was not a game that you would put a huge block of, of hours <laughs> into, but that's okay. A I, day. I, I, I really do believe that there are certain titles that are, are more designed in that way. I, th- I think that's totally cool. Uh, I think I've covered pretty much everything I want to. Was there anything that, that you wanted to, to comment on? No, there's the graphics, the music, there's Ikea. the story, there's Ikea, and the um, combat's actually pretty good, even though we haven't really gotten too far into the game. Like, I, I imagine we would actually, probably come across more weapons. I have a suggestion. That's a good thing to bring up, Russ. One thing I wanted to say was I wish there was a way, like, that you could do specific attacks because it seems like you're just button mashing all the time and he goes like one two three with like a lunge and like can i do any like other moves because there's sometimes i wanted to do just the lunge and then sometimes i just wanted to do like a one two shot and then back away um and so i think it would have benefited more from like different abilities or moves that you can do in the game not to say that there's not some later on but like i would want some from the beginning I can tell you that after I got the shield, more moves become available. No. Um, and it's nice too, because you have a shield. So then like, you know, if, if someone's like trying to wreak havoc on you, you just like, you know, like, hide behind your shield and everything else. Captain America. And so I have a feeling that as you progress through the game, more and more abilities will uh, become unlocked and uh, keep things a little more freshy fresh. You know do you saying? learn to read the writing at all? Rose? Oh, I have no idea what it says. Mm. I, but again, I appreciate the effort in terms of how they came up with their own language because it immerses me more into that world in terms of the world being fully realized. But to your point at the same time, I have no idea what anything says. Like, again, I I have to rely on like the Ikea oriented instructions to be like, okay, I think this does that or whatever. And I don't know. I'm kind of ambivalent. I I go back and forth with whether or not I I like that or not. But uh, overall, are you going to play the game all the way through and beat it? I, well, that, see, Russ, you say that, uh-huh. and I'm going to give you a one big smack and maybe. For that. <laughs> a resounding maybe? <laughs> because we uh, we have yet to play Elden Ring. Uh-huh. I mean, you have. I, I created a character. That's all I did. I didn't get anywhere. Okay. But I haven't even created a character yet, Russ. Yes. So that game is going to be ginormous. Indeed. And so you take that... And then whatever else is going to come out this year. And I guess I'm just going to have to uh, divide up my time appropriately, Russ. It's totally fair. Oh. It's, com- it's completely fair. But you are gonna, you think you're going to beat it? I am. Oh. I, I'm having fun with the game. Okay. I do think that it is a unique title. And mm. again, it's the type of game that rewards you the more you play it, the more you get into it. You just, I don't know, like to me, I find it a pleasant romp. Oh, romp around the, the clock, huh? A romp-a-roo. Romping. 
That wraps up this episode of Joygasm. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. If you enjoyed this episode, we invite you to check out patreon.com slash joygasm where you can enjoy exclusive perks and early access to the show, not to mention it continues helping us financially doing the show. Also, make sure you smush that subscribe button. Maybe uh, throw your shield at that uh, Thong. notification bell. Yeah. That way you will not miss a single episode of Joygasm, which drops once a week every week. And while you're at it, do a search for at Joygasm TV on your favorite social media of choice. We're on just about all of them. Last but not least, do a search for Joygasm TV on Twitch to see us stream our gaming adventures live Every Wednesday night at 9.30 p.m. Central Time. When it works. When it works, exactly. (laughs) We invite you to come back next week as we are going to be reviewing the very first episode of the Halo TV series. We're very curious to see what they have in store, so we'll see you then.